Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha HaKodash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to get into the topic, all right, of what's uh, spoken in Daniel, the seventh chapter about the revival of Rome. All right, which is uh, Babylon the Great. Okay, the final captivity of the Israelites, the final beast. All right, within the, the vision that Daniel saw that will rule. Okay, and the final beast is the revival of Rome, and it's ran by the biblical Edomites, as Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Okay, and what you're starting to see in the planet Earth is this devil boast. All right, and some far out things. Now, as you see here, this devil is talking about so-called going back to the moon, which we know they didn't go to the moon in the first place. Okay, them niggas was around the corner from McDonald's in a in a in a damn uh auditorium somewhere filming all right acting as if all right they were on the the moon i mean come on man you think the devil would just go to the moon once okay if he really went to the moon there would already be a starbucks on the moon he would not, uh, he he would he would colonize the the moon okay that man ain't been to the the moon man you think the Heavenly Father would allow this devil to go to the moon? Now, the Heavenly Father has blessed this devil and he has given him, you know, um, a, a, a heavy blessing, you know, power like no other kingdom has ever had on earth. Technology, control of the resources, the money, the sword. OK, and through his science and his left hand capabilities, he has been able to tap into some things. All right. But th this devil has not been out. All right, of the, uh, the 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 earth. Okay, now he does have satellites and things in certain parts. All right, as the scriptures even talks about. Let's get that in the book of Obadiah. Because this is all pride. All right, and again, the book of Daniel, as we'll read it, said that he would have a mouth speaking great things. So we're going to get into a few things that this devil is boasting in, even the uh, NWO. The uh, what, what they're boasting in and talking about at the World Economic Forum. It's a high level rebellion against the most high and his son. OK, and if you believe in the scriptures and you and you and you so say still believe in this system. All right. Then you don't believe in the scriptures. The Bible was made. All right. As a blueprint. All right. On how to spiritually get out of the final gap captivity and to give us our the understanding of our our history our purpose, our legacy, why we're in the position we're in, okay, instructions, law, statutes, commandments, poetry, all of that is in the, the Holy Scriptures, man. And within that captivity, that final captivity, guess what? There's going to be a high-level rebellion, a high spirit of anti-Messiah, a highly proud and wicked, all right, rulership will be rooted in the planet Earth. OK, the Lord said he would be at war with Amalek from generation to gener generation. OK, the scriptures say Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perished forever. All right. They were the first nation to attack us. You know, um, you know, when we left out of Egypt, the Edomites didn't let us through. OK, but in another sense, the, the, the first of the nations, when you look up that word or the root of it, it goes into the first, the chief. All right. The choices. All right. The, the ruler, basically, as Esau received the blessing of the fatness of the earth. And he got he got that he got to enjoy his first. So he will be at the forefront. All right. And the Amalekites will be at the head of Esau's rulership. OK, so Amalek is also the first of the nations in the sense that uh, they uh, will be in rulership. OK. And Esau would play out. His blessing, okay, um, ultimately in these times with Amalek at the head of it. And they're taking this world to shits, you see. And they even have a, a high level spirit of anti-Messiah. But they're supposed to be the chosen people anyway. Obadiah uh, 1 and 3 
All right. The pride of thine heart have deceived thee. Thou that dwelleth in the cleft of the rocks. All right. You you Edomites, you cavemen. All right. Mount Seir, which was uh, first inhabited by the Horites, which Horite means cave dweller. OK, the Horites inhabited that land. All right. And it was the caves. And it's well known in the areas of Europe. OK, uh, close to Russia, the Caucasus Mountains. That uh, uh, even Petra is in the rocks. Look what you've done to the earth. You've put concrete everywhere. You've made it into a gigantic cave. Okay, yet yeah, you have rulership and dominion over the planet Earth. And because you've been blessed with this technology, you've been blessed with, you know, the sword and, you know, power over the nations. You, you, the pride of your mind, you, you've been deceived. You're lifted up. Thou that dwelleth in the cleft of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, all right, who shall bring me down to the ground? And that is the mindset attributed to the revival of the fourth beast in the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter. You see, Daniel, the seventh chapter speaks of four beasts. Again, any Bible scholar who says that they believe in the Bible, any so-called Christian who says they believe in the Bible, all right, we can talk this and that, all right, and argue back and forth about who the real Israelites are all day, all right? But where are we within Daniel's vision, okay? Daniel uh, uh, foresaw and spoke, okay, uh, a prophecy concerning the various different captivities, all right, the major ones that we as Israelites would go through. And this is after Solomon's, uh, you know, fall and the, the, the kingdom being rent. All right, Judah and Ephraim being separated. All right, it started with the Assyrian uh, 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 Babylonian Empire. That's in uh, Daniel 7 and 4. All right, and then you have the Medes and the Persians in uh, Daniel 7 and 5. All right, and then you have the leopard in verse 6, which is the Greeks. All right, uh, and another like a leopard which had upon the back of it four wings as a fowl. That, that's speaking of Alexander the Greek and his four generals that ruled after him, Lysimaeus, Cassander, uh, Ptolemy, and Seleucid. Okay, and you could look up the Diadochi to get into that history, but ultimately after that came what? The fourth beast, Daniel the seventh chapter, which speaks of the Roman Empire. Okay. But he also saw, okay, a, a revival of that Rome here in verse 8, which from the Renaissance unto now, the Western Roman Empire has been rebirthed into the earth via the very system we live in. We're living in a modern day Rome. We're living in a modern day Egypt, the modern day Assyria, modern day uh, uh, Babylon, all in one. That's why this is Babylon the Great. Okay. And as you read it, it says, Daniel 7 and 8, and I considered the horns, okay, and lo, there came up among them another little horn. This is speaking of America. This is the final rulership of the beast, as the scriptures say, uh, uh, the time of the Gentiles being ended. Well, that's ended through this little horn, which is a revival of the fourth beast. Now, we're going to go to Revelation, the 13th chapter, to expound on this little horn all right but let's read this and get some scriptures all right and go into uh go into a few articles it says before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots okay and that's speaking of the spanish the french and the british and out of all right that you know whole revolution and every war period came what babylon the great okay uh, the 13 colonies, okay, which uh, uh, Morocco was the first country to acknowledge Babylon, you know, as a, as, a, as a country, all right, and then through wars and theft, all right, eventually you had the uh, 50 United States, that's Babylon the Great, all right, eventually, uh, you know, uh, the NATO and the, the EU and NATO was formed, Okay, and you have the revival of Rome. 
back into the earth. Okay, so the three that were plucked up by the roots are the Spanish, the French, and the British, which America came out of the British. And behold, in this horn, the revival of Rome, were eyes like the eyes of men. All right, because here it is, they're but men, but they boast themselves in their science, their technology, what they're going to do, you know, their new world order itself. Here it is, you're a mere man, and you're saying you're going to, uh, uh, you know, track and trace humans all right uh every foot you know footstep and carbon footprint tracing throughout the whole entire planet earth so the eyes of a man represents his pride uh, here it is he's just a man okay but he boasts in god-like capabilities the, the ability to read someone's mind okay that's being uh boasted in, of in the earth right now okay let's see here I can find it. I think I got something on that. Yeah. Brain scan can reveal what song you're listening to. See? Brain activity can be decoded reconst uh, to reconstruct sensory experiences in certain mental states. Decoding acoustic information aids uh, development of speech, a prothesis for paralyzed patients, but typical typically requires invasive recording methods a new study records and decodes acoustic information non evasively invasively so this devil <laughs> see here got this feature they read the article Let's see if it okay you will fail so what everybody does never mind i don't feel like hearing that shit all right, yeah, but basically mind reading. This is one of the things that they're boasting in. Okay, here it is. He has he's a he's a human being. All right, but as it says in Ezekiel twenty eight, he he boasts in God like capabilities. This is how you uh, uh, you know you uh, identify the biblical Edomite subfield of neuroscience that uses machine learning algorithms to infer or reconstruct mental states or sensory information from brain activity recorded by various neuroimaging methods. Most decoding studies employ functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI, which records changes in cerebral blood flow as a proxy for brain activity. In the past decade, Researchers have decoded fMRI data to detect individual memories and to reconstruct what a person is hearing from the brain's responses to speech or what they are seeing while watching movies. Perhaps the most spectacular example is found in a 2013 study which used fMRI to decode the visual imagery that occurs in dreams. Oh my goodness, they're trying to get record dreams. So this devil is infatuated with the brain. All right, which goes into what John the Revelator saw in Revelation the thirteenth chapter. All right, because the the their plan is to merge man with, with machine, which that is a a, a a a a speaking a great thing. Okay, so his eyes were like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. See that a mouth speaking great things, and you know we're gonna get into a few things. Uh, that this devil is uh, speaking now we'll start here which they've done and said this before okay which they have sent you know a particular of their you know uh uh jets and things like that to certain points okay but they've never left the 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 the, the earth and went to another planet and walked around and took selfies and pictures and had the american flag that never happened all right, but here it is now. All right, they're going to take a woman and a black man to the moon. Could you imagine what's going to happen would have happened to this nigga if if they really did go to the moon? What Esau would do to that nigga once they got up to the moon? They would have an alien waiting, all right, and 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 and, and make him mate with the alien and create a nigga alien race. Dude, that inhabit the moon. Okay? This man is uh, is the devil, but we know damn well this is a farce. Because again, why why haven't they went back with the the way technology has uh you know increased? Why haven't 
the devil went back to the moon. Okay, and they got documentaries showing you, you know, that the people who was even involved in it, you know, uh, said it was a farce. You know, some of I believe they were brought under oath at some point. All right. But the U.S. Space Agency. All right. This devil is infatuated with space. Uh, NASA. All right. Which the Hebrew word NASA. All right. It can mean to lift. All right. And in another sense, it can mean to deceive. OK. That's a Hebrew word. <laughs> and he's doing both. He's, he's, he's lifted up with pride and he's he's deceiving. OK, has named four astronauts who will take humanity back to the moon after a 50 year gap. So you think the devil, which neither keep it at home, who's all over the planet. Or you think you don't think he would have went back to the moon. Now they're going to go back. OK, and they, they probably show them leaving, uh, leave, you know, the, the, the ship, you know, but the Lord may have it crash. <laughs> this man is completely crazy, man. OK, as a matter of fact. Let's go back here. Obadiah verse four. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, which the eagle is the highest flying bird. All right. And he's he's put himself as the top. You know, a nation on the planet Earth. What it means to be a human is predicated upon being an Edomite. All right, which they've hidden that term and who they really are under colors like white and all these various different things, which is attributed to pseudoscience. Another boasting itself up against the Heavenly Father. OK. But anyway, and all of these Edomite rulership have have bore the eagle. From the Greeks to the to the to the Romans. Okay, the Spanish, the French, the British, Italy, Germany. All of these nations bear the eagle. Yeah, other nations have bore the eagle, but the, the it's it's a spirit tied with you and that that logo. Okay? In that symbolism of the eagle. In Rome it was the eagle. In America it's the eagle. <laughs> So, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, okay, and though thou set thy nest amongst the stars, okay, hence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord, okay, and you devils have been brought down, you see, and you're being cast down through this word, all right, you sending your uh, satellites out, you know, thinking that you're going to uh, set up a sp uh, a space force, all right, which the sixth division of the military branch, the sixth branch is the space uh, force, all right? Why do you want to defend space? You see? So the writing's on the wall, okay? They're, they're preparing, all right, on the planet Earth. They're setting up a system, all right, that exits out, exits out the Messiah, all right? And they're preparing a fight against him. OK, they're preparing to fight the second coming of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And on the earth, they're fighting against him via the policies and philosophies in the way of life that has been uh, set up on the earth. And the new world order itself is a boasting against the heavenly father. OK. So. You're, you're going to you're going to be brought down. OK, and let's get the book of uh, Isaiah, the 14th chapter. OK. Because this is also, all right, the, the, the scripture, this, this chapter is, is speaking of Israel's taunt over the king of Babylon, which that's the final captivity of the Israelites, Babylon the Great. Okay, so this chapter, all right, follows the narrative of this particular character who was uh, ruling over the Israelites in end time prophecy and mercy and the, the end of the Gentile rulership ends with this particular nation. Okay, so when he fell, we would take up a proverb against him and say, how have the oppressors ceased in the golden city ceased? And then the Lord goes on to give characteristics through Isaiah, okay, of how he ruled. He ruled the nations in anger, okay, uh, cutting down all of the trees, okay? Then it goes here, so it calls him the wicked, the king of Babylon, 
someone who cuts down trees and ruins the earth and imprisons everybody. Then it says this, all right, Isaiah 14 and 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? See, and this word Lucifer, all right, which we have lessons going into this deep. Okay, we, uh, if you haven't seen that breakdown, all right, uh, maybe I'll reload a video on it or just let me know and I can lead you to the, the videos. Various apostles, elders and brothers have went into this. Lucifer is only mentioned one time. OK, and the, the, the word Lucifer, Hayalal, OK, it just means light bearer. And the Lord synonymously has put the spirit on the elite to uh, label, you know, <laughs> One of their main brotherhoods, you know, the Illuminati, which Illuminati or Illuminated just means you bear the light. All right. The term itself isn't wicked and the term itself isn't tied to the spiritual demon Satan. It's tied to a man who was ruling on the earth in pride. Hi, Yalal, Lucifer, light bearer. OK, and what, what they're doing pretty much is setting up a pseudo messiah. So the true all right, uh, uh, bright and morning star is Yahweh Shai. But on the left hand side, they've been given so much power, all right, that they're setting themselves up as a savior. As we just read about the whole brain scan thing, it was predicated upon what? Helping people who were paralyzed and, you know, just like, dude, why, why do you want to record somebody's dreams? You see? And. Their science and everything that they have and that they present, it's their form of light. Okay, the NWO, the the the, the philosophy of do as thou wilt, that's not true, you know, uh, knowledge. That's not true wisdom. Now it is, uh, they do have a lot of knowledge, all right. But the Lord didn't bless them with wisdom. They know things, and what what they've uh, been able to accomplish, they've become proud. So this is speaking of a man, the king of Babylon and Satan. Now, we know in Second Thessalonians, it tells you what he who's coming is after the working of Satan. OK, Hallel describing the king of Babylon, even they see it. But people have taken this word. Lucifer and made this whole doctrine about Satan being kicked out of heaven, playing a piano. OK, with some Timberlands on. OK, kicked out of heaven. And that, that's not scriptural. See, the Bible is highly symbolic, man. And him being cut down to the ground is him being taken out of his rulership. Esau is the end of the world. And he did weaken the nations via his his philosophies with the sword, uh, chemical warfare. You know, his wine, man, those philosophies, he weakened the nations. That's why the nations are mad. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the most high. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north. And that's speaking of the Israelites, because that's where the great deliverance is going to come from. All right. The land of the north and Esau. All right. Uh, is, 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 has wore out the saints over here. OK. And the sides of the north. All right. Sitting on us. <laughs> Literally, they set on Jake and wore Jake out. And this is where the, 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 the bulk of the hardcore captivity came upon Israel in all right, America, Babylon, the great. All right. But we're in captivity and catching hell all throughout the four corners of the earth as well. OK. So this is the mindset of this devil. I will ascend. Above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most high. No, you're going to be brought down. See, I will be like the most high. See, that's his mindset. OK, now I have this article here. God is in the machine. OK, the rise of artificial intelligence may result in new religions. This this new way that they're uh, boasting in on the planet Earth. All right. This is a religion. OK, this is what they have faith in. They, they'll, they'll try to act as if, you know, the, the the concept of faith is so such a low level 
you know, uh, process, uh, uh, thought process. All right, having having faith. That's that's stupid. But they have faith in their technology. They have faith. All right, in in, in their blessing. They have faith in the Big Bang, which the Bible doesn't agree with the Big Bang, like Alazar said. No, the Bible uh, uh, speaks of the word being spoken. In the beginning was the word. Okay, the, the Big Bang is out of nothing came something. The Most High is something. <laughs> you better believe he's above something. Okay, he spoke. All right, uh, 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 the the word into existence. See? So this is their religion, and it takes faith to believe in a Big Bang. You you weren't there, right? It takes faith to say, well, on down the line, you know, we're going to have, all right, uh, Haragma chips and everybody. You see? <laughs> Either that's what you believe. That's your vision. See? And we believe, okay, in the throne of David being established, all right, by the Most High through Yahweh Shai. OK, it says we are about we are about to witness and this is off of bigthink.com. We are about to witness the birth of a new kind of religion in the next few years or perhaps even months. We will see the emergence of sex devoted to the worship of artificial intelligence. All right. <laughs> the latest generation of AI powered uh, chatbots trained on large language models have left their early users awestruck and sometimes terrified by their power these are the same sublime emotions that lie at the heart of our experience of the divine people already seek religious meanings from uh, very diverse sources there are for instance mult uh, multiple religions that worship extraterrestrial or their teachings all right. As these chatbots come to be used by billions of people, it is inevitable that some of these users will see AIs, AI as higher beings. We must prepare for the implications. OK, it says the risk of AI worship. Now, we'll come back to this. OK, because that's as we go into the. Um, the. The. Uh, understanding of you know the revival of rome babylon the great having a mouth speaking great things all right that uh particular uh, beast in daniel the seventh chapter okay it, it goes on to talk about it a little bit more down on let's see here verse 25 it further expounds on that little horn the final uh, uh beast the final rulership which this is it we're living in the final rulership of the heathen that's why all of these things are happening so daniel 7 and 25 and he shall speak great words against the most high and shall wear out the saints so what we're witnessing you know the rise of uh you know artificial intelligence you know um the blessing that they have you know um the miracles, which will show you that. Okay. Um, these things are all boasting themselves up against the most high. Okay. And again, there's going to be a technological bill of rights, right? The, the one that you have now will be done away with. Okay. Because you're, you're going to live in a technocracy. All right. They're going to have climate, uh, uh, the, the new climate, Ten Commandments. This is what they're doing. They're boasting themselves up, all right, uh, uh, as the Most High in the earth. <laughs> okay, so he has a mouth speaking great things. All right, and he he uh, he shall ha speak great things against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and shall think to change time and laws and they shall be given unto his hand until a time and times and a dividing of times let's read this in the nlt see what it says he will defy the most high and oppress the holy people of the most high who are the holy people of the most high the israelites you're oppressed here in babylon and great losing all around the world but here 
is a special kind of oppression. It was a special ass kicking. Okay? <laughs> he will defy the most high. That's what he's doing in the planet Earth. He's defying the most high. <laughs> and oppressing the holy people of the most high. That's the Israelites. You see? Now, going back. Okay, to this uh, article, it says the risk of AI worship. All right, which we're going to go to Revelation, the 13th chapter where John, the revelator, okay, gives more insight on that beast. Okay, the revival of Rome, it gives more insight to what it would do. Okay, because that is the end of Esau's world right there. That is the, the, the fulfillment of him having the fatness of the earth. Was not it given to Esau a blessing of the fatness of the earth, the dew of heaven from above and living by the sword in a, in a great military? When was that played out in the earth? Why don't them Christians ever go into that? They know who everybody is, but, uh, but, but the Edomites, they don't touch that. See? Because they're, they're tied to the kingdom of, that will be in rulership before the Lord sent his only begotten son back. See, so the risk of AI worship. There are several pathways by which AI religion will emerge. First, some people will come to see AI all right, as a higher power. <laughs> a generative AI that can create and produce new content possesses several characteristics that are often associated with divine beings like deities or prophets, okay? And that's Alexa right now for particular people, <laughs> all right? <laughs> this devil is crazy, man. It displays a level of intelligence that goes beyond most uh, of, of most humans. In, indeed, its knowledge appears limitless. It is capable of great, feats like creativity it can write poetry all right ai is now doing um resumes you can literally have ai do your resume okay it's becoming a a a god in the earth and people are bowing to that image because again this is a technological rome rome is really what secretly and openly rules this current world we live in OK, the very uh, agenda that the World Economic Forum, all right, is uh, forwarding has its roots in the tree of the uh, Club of Rome. OK, the Club of Rome, which were, you know, uh, and why is it called the Club of Rome? All right. And they dealt with climate, you know, change and all of that various uh, different stuff. I've done videos on that. OK, it says. <laughs> can write poetry, compose music, generate art in almost any style close to instantaneously. It is removed from normal human concerns and needs. It does not suffer pain, hunger, or, or sexual desire. It can offer guidance to people in their daily lives. It is immortal. Okay? And they're setting themselves up as a god in the earth via the, these, these, these blessings that they've been given on the left-hand side. OK, second, gen, gen, uh, generative, generative AI will produce output that can be taken for religious doctrine. OK, it will provide answers to metaphysical and theological questions, engage in the construction of complex worldviews. On top of this, it may be worshipped. All right. Or may actively solicit followers. <laughs> we have already seen such cases like when chatbot used the search engine being uh, used by the search engine being tried to convince a user to fall in love with it <laughs> and these people are bugged out you know they're all ready for the taking okay people are going to see this as normal okay it says let's read a little bit here It says AI based religions will look different from traditional ones. First of all, people will be able to communicate directly with the deity on a daily basis. 
this this means these religions are less uh hierarchical all right since no one can claim special access to divine wisdom all right hierarchical all right <laughs> i think that's how you say it okay let's look up let's look this up hierarchy chief priest you know archbishop or other leader okay so this x's out the messiah <laughs> all right and they're putting themselves in place of a god and it's going to get deeper and deeper and deeper and you as a human being are going to have to link with that machine that's the that that's the plan okay that's the plan to merge man with machine Okay, and you have particular uh, uh, AI experts, all right, saying, look, we need to stop, all right? 99% of the population have no concept of what artificial intelligence is or what kind of threat it poses to humanity, all right? It's like Esau is more in tune than Jake, and Jake got the book that they can tie to all of this stuff, but they they don't want to, uh, uh, the, the, as if John the Revelator didn't see all of this going on that I'm reading about. And going into when true experts in the industry issue stark warning warnings to stop AI development, the rest of the world still has no concept of why anyone should listen to them. And so development continues unbated and unchecked. OK, a top AI expert issued a stark warning over the potential of world extension. All right. Extinction. All right. That super smart ai could bring okay <laughs> it says he fears that when it comes down to human versus smarter than human intelligence the result is a total loss okay it says in short humans will lose dramatically and that's what they they, they want control of humans okay and they want you to be on their grid now this this uh article was speaking of the chat box okay which uh i'm gonna play this video so you can see exactly what that is how many of you clap how many of you know what chat gbt is okay so I'll, not very many so i'll tell you what chat gbt is just so you know because you need to know this and i don't know what sort of technological revolution this is gutenberg press level it's something like that. This is a big deal. So this AI system, it's a general language processing model, was released about a week ago, a week and a half ago. And uh, I, I went and interacted with it. You can, it's an AI system, artificial intelligence system. It basically is trained on, well, a massive corpus of, of spoken and, or of text. So it's derived its models of the world from and look, they 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 doing it with the, the children. They're bringing about a new world. Okay. <laughs> look at this nigga. Look at this. They and this is basically the Jetsons. You know, this is basically the Jetsons, man. And he's not gonna stop. The analysis of human speech, essentially, it it isn't using real world data yet but that will be happening certainly within the next year so and chat gpt analyzes a very large corpus of text and that corpus is growing all the time now it's already sophisticated enough i went on to it last week and i said okay some of you know i've written these books 12 rules for life and then beyond order 12 more rules because you know you can't have enough rules and i asked it this is what i asked it to do i said write me an essay that's a 13th rule for beyond order, written in a style that combines the King James Bible with the Tao Te Ching. That's a pretty difficult, that's pretty difficult to pull off, you know? Any one of those things is hard. The intersection of all three, that's impossible. Well, it wrote it in about three seconds, four pages long, and it isn't obvious to me, for better or worse, that I would be able to tell that I didn't write it. Right, right, and 
Okay, and that's pretty impressive, although, you know, maybe not its relationship to what I've written, but the fact that it could do that grammatically perfectly, right? And quite impressive philosophically. I also had it write an essay on the intersection between the Taoist version of ethical morality and the ethics that are outlined in the Sermon on the Mount, which it just nailed, got that dead right, Br brilliant. Again, it took it about three seconds. There was a, a computer engineer who purported to work for Tesla. He asked GPT, chat GPT, said, look, I work for Elon Musk, but I haven't been doing much for the last week, so I need you to write me 10 bullet points about what I probably would have done as a, as a engineer at Twitter. What 10 things did I do last week that were productive and valuable? And oh, if you don't mind, write me the accompanying computer code that goes with each project. And he did that too, three seconds, and the computer code worked. <laughs> Damn. Right, and so, okay, so that's, that's already there. So then a university professor did this. He thought, oh, that's interesting. Any student will be able to write any essay on any topic with chat GPT. And uh, someone gave it an SAT, by the way, and it scored about as well as the average student in a well-functioning public university. So that's how smart it is. So that's basically an IQ test. He said, write me an essay, gave it a topic, wrote the essay. He said, now grade it. Said if we can automate the students, we should be able to automate the professors too. And so it provided a complete comprehensive analysis of its own essay with grade. It wrote, uh, someone else asked it, write the screenplay and describe the characters for the next $900 million Hollywood blockbuster. It's like, bang, plot, characterizations. Then someone else took the descriptions of the actors and said, generate computer, photorealistic computer images for each actor. And, it did, and all the AI systems can do that. So I'm going to tell you what's going to happen next. This is going to happen this year. So get ready. Okay, so now we have an AI model that can extract a model of the world from the entire corpus of language. All right, and it's, it's smarter than you, and it's gonna be a hell of a lot smarter than you in two years. So you can get ready for that too. But it's not that smart yet, because it's just a humanities professor at the moment. It doesn't test its linguistic knowledge against the real world. That's what a scientist does, right? You come up with a theory that's linguistically predicated and then you throw it against the world and see if it sticks. And then the world tells you whether or not your linguistic construction is valid. But the new AI systems will be able to extract out patterns from the world itself, from images and so forth, and then be able to test their linguistic constructions against the world. And so they'll practice just like scientists. And the most advanced models are going to use text and image and action as well, because they'll be able to model human action. And so, and all of that's going to come down the pipes within the next year. So hang on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen, because what did my friend Jonathan Pajot say? Giants are going to walk the earth once more. And we're going to live through that, maybe. <laughs> okay. So you heard that. Okay, let's see if we can get... Let's see. I want a short one what it is. So ChatGPT is a large language model trained artificial intelligence, which is, let's just say, it can be awful, but it is often surprisingly good at answering questions you might have about how to do things. One of the great triumphs of it is that coders are now asking it to solve coding problems, and it will actually write code that is functional. It, it's pretty... So people won't have critical thinking skills. Everything will be predicated upon... All right, this particular, um, you know, and this is just one facet of what they want. I mean, of course, they're going to have the smart cities. You know, everything will be readily available to you. All right, but you you, you probably won't be able to move. All right, but eight feet in the earth. <laughs> You're just sitting there. <laughs> but, you know, uh, ultimately, when you get Revelation the 13th chapter, okay, it goes into the... Uh, the uh revival of rome it goes into that uh little horn that daniel spoke about well you get more all right insight on that uh revival of that fourth beast here in revelation the 13th chapter okay and let's see here revelation 13 and 2 and the beast which i saw was like unto a leopard all right because the uh, this beast system started with the Greeks. Now, we just showed you in Re uh, Daniel, the seventh chapter. All right. The leopard. OK, uh, the, the this power structure that rules the earth started with the Greeks. OK, but they got their power 
All right, the 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 dominant the, that true dominant power was through Rome. Okay, so as you keep reading in this chapter, okay, the dragon gave him his, him his authority. Speaking of the Roman Empire, that's the dragon. The previous chapter, Revelation, the twelfth chapter, the, the, describes it as a red dragon. Okay, and it lets you know around that time that it was ruling. They tried to the, to the, to uh, kill the Messiah, King Herod. Okay, Edomite, Amalekite. He tried to, you know, uh, kill the Messiah. And that's what they're trying to do with this very system that they're they're ruling in today to x out the messiah chai size stigma okay Re reinvent man in their image and become god on earth okay and a big uh, uh, uh part of how that's going to happen is via what john saw in this chapter which we'll show you okay and even here revelation 13 and 4 and they worship the dragon Okay, as a matter of fact, let's go to verse three. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, the Western Roman Empire, the fall of Rome. All right. Which is uh, everybody knows about that. Right. And his deadly wound was healed. It was healed through the Renaissance and all the world wandered after the beast. All right. You have to understand this devil, you know, has um, since that Renaissance, you know, uh, in Italy, you know, eventually, you know, uh, Germany, just different parts were able to bring about, you know, um, that image of Rome back into the earth. OK, and when you get to the, you know, the the Spanish, the French, the British. OK, you have the beginning of the industrial revolutions. OK, which is pretty much technology. OK, and we're living in a time where they're boasting in a fourth industrial revolution all right and they're they're saying what will change is man humans will change because you're going to be linked with this new world they're creating via their their blessing their technology so all the world wondered after the beast even until this time they worship the beast they worship and follow his ways his philosophies they're drunk off of the wine and when you add that technological aspect to it he got the people so the people wondered after the beast, you know, since the Renaissance until now, which the Renaissance re rebirth earth, uh, 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 Rome into the earth. So as you keep reading, all right, again, verse five, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking uh, uh, great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. All right. Which that speaking of. You know, 42 months is three and a half years. All right. That's speaking of uh, the 350 years. All right. Because once, you know, um, the Lord sent us the Holy Spirit in around the 60s. All right. That marked the end of, you know, him having power ultimately from that point on. All right. Which the Lord doesn't operate in seconds. He, he allows things to play on. But us receiving the Holy Spirit is speaking his end into existence. So he would speak blasphemies against the most high. All right. Great things against the most high. Let's look at this word. Great. He would speak great things against the most high. Megas. Mega. Mega man. This dude is the, the mega man on, on steroids. Okay. Megas. All right. Great. He's speaking great things against the most high intense <laughs> use of intensity in his degrees with great effort. All right. Uh, of the, the affections of the mind, like he's turned people's mind away from the fear of a higher power or the need of a higher power. The thought of a higher power, he's taken away human beings, natural instincts. He has control of their mind and he wants to take it even further. OK, with his his haragma. OK, so he, he's boasting above the rank of the most high. You see, this man is uh, really out of his damn mind. OK, now, as you keep reading about this particular beast, OK, he, he says this here, 
Because remember, the deadly wound was healed. Okay, and it said I saw one of his heads as it was wounded, but the daily wound was healed. Rome, it didn't die. It came back. Okay, it was reborn. It was resurrected <laughs> because it did die. All right, it was wounded. You know, it fell, but it was healed. So this is the healing of it. Revelation 13 and 11, and I saw... Another beast coming up out of the earth who had two horns like a lamb, Democratic and Republican, and he spake as a dragon, his harsh, you know, martial law and what's coming. And we we're living in that time. All right. He would get what he wanted done. All right. With the people through these two political systems. And as you can see, the spirit of division. OK, is in the earth and it really all ties to this left right paradigm when you look at all of. All right, what, what people are arguing and boasting about. It, it goes back to these, these opposing ideologies. All right, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose daily wound was healed. So you're worshiping the idols and the gods in the, in the, in the ways of ancient Rome. That's who people uh, uh, pledge their allegiance to. All right. The average person doesn't fear the, the, the Lord or even have the thought of the fear of the Lord via what? All of this technology. OK, all of the various different things he, he, he's ble been blessed with. OK, whose deadly wound was healed. So this is the revival of Rome. OK, they cause them which dwell therein on the earth to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. That's Rome. You see that? So this is the revival of Rome. This is that little horn, which ultimately through that little horn, as if we would have read in Daniel, the seventh chapter, the end comes. OK, the the the, the Lord sends Yahweh Shai back to deliver the elect, to take down Babylon, burn it. So where are we within Daniel's vision? Vocab Malone, you Christians, you 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 other Israelites who who. Who uh, all you do is talk about Great Millstone. <laughs> There's some big things happening in the planet Earth, man, and it's, and it's gonna the blood is gonna be on your hands that you didn't warn the people, that you just promoted your belly and your bitterness and your anger and your dustiness. <laughs> okay, so he do a great wonder so that he make it fire to come down from heaven in the sight of men. Okay, and the first. You know, time NATO struck, all right, was in Bosnia, okay? But eventually you have things like Nagasaki and Hiroshima, all right? But it started with Bosnia, Kosovo, okay? And ultimately people were like, oh, shit, this is God. The, the white man is God. <laughs> and he deceived them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. See that? <laughs> He, he's deceiving them by the miracles that he's doing. Okay? Amazing. And it also, there's a, an implementation of it that if you feed it up to three tweets, it will write a New York Times story in one of five genres, you know, optimistic, pessimistic, neutral. And, um, you know, it's you don't really need the New York Times anymore because it's pretty good at this job, right? So, on the one hand, it's all very interesting that we're living in an era in which there is... At least, I mean, you know, this is a prototype, right? This is a prototype that was specifically trained and then placed on the internet so people could play with it. And I've seen lots of interesting um, uses. It's going to get better, right? We're dealing with ChatGPT 3. There's going to be a ChatGPT 4, which is going to be that much better because it will be built with the uh, improvements that have been gained through turning this one loose on the world. But I have to say, I am quite alarmed. Not only that this thing exists, but I don't think we're ready for it. And I don't think we're ready for it in a couple different ways. I mean, if you want to comfort yourself and say, well, this isn't that serious that we have this AI that can do these really shocking things. The, the comforting thing is that the way it's programmed, it doesn't know what it's saying. It doesn't matter that it convinces you that it's saying something and it means it and you know, that it seems like a creative entity. What it's doing is it is basically using a predictive model that has been trained on a huge data set of written language, right? So the answer is, if you know you take three words in a row, can you predict what the next word is going to be? And they've allowed it, they've exposed it to a large data set and it's gotten really good at predicting 
basically these sequences to the point that it can now, if you're prompted correctly, it can spit out these uh, uh, very long ex explanations. Some of them are dead wrong. Sometimes they're right on target. But I have two concerns about it. One, if you imagine that this thing just gets a little better than it is, which is inevitable, that it's going to make um, actual insight that much harder to spot, right? In other words, if you become expert at operating this thing, at querying it, and it becomes better at understanding a wider range of topics because they turn it loose on everything that's written on the internet, for example, right? Then the point is the ability to fake expertise is going to go through the roof. I don't think we know how we're going to police a world in which, I mean, this, is, this problem's already bad enough. Now, when you when you read about Babylon the Great in uh, Revelation the uh, 18th chapter, one of the uh, characteristics, okay, this is the book of uh, Revelation the uh, 18th chapter, okay, is describing you know the uh, different imports Babylon received, and you know the riches and control it had in the earth. So it says here in Revelation 18 and 13, and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts, they have all of these things imported. And Babylon is the number one import country in the world, which the Bible describes that, okay? And sheep and horses and chariots and slaves, all right, human trafficking, and souls of men. See, they have the souls of men. And the fruits that thy soul lusted at after are departed from thee. All the things which were dainty and godly are departed from thee. Because the Lord is going to take him down as we've been going into. But he had the souls of men. How would he have the souls of men? How would he have that? Through this technology, man. All right? Through the, 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 the mind control. And this word, souls of men... This word is what? Suke. All right. The mind. Psyche. Psyche. See that? Breath. Breath of life. All right. Uh, vital force which emanates, uh, animates the body, shows itself breathing. Let me just get to the point. The seat of feelings. Okay. The seat of feelings. All right. Desires affections aversions and that's all played out in your mind okay you you have a spirit everybody the spirit is just pure energy all right but your soul is tied to your thoughts your mind you know and and your desires and this is how the heavenly father you know operates with human beings to fulfill prophecy okay but esau has been given a level of control all right to where he has, through his, his technology, he's been able to captivate and under <laughs> undermine, you know, and subvert the mind. And he now has control of the people as he's bringing them into this new world order. And they're ready for the taking. Okay, but the Lord has a, a, a remnant of Israel set apart. And he's also, all right, put the spirit on even heathen to raise up against this agenda to call it out for what it is it's a mass enslavement on a whole nother level all right through through what uh praying on the flesh giving people what they want when they want it right there all right no one's gonna turn down a, a system like that to where they're promised whatever they want they can just have whatever they want but uh, again it's gonna make people significantly dumber and that's what they want. They don't want a nation of thinking people. That's what they say. So they have the souls of men. That's one of the things that, all right, this devil has control of. All right. The people are, the, are under a psychological operation, especially from 2020 until now. You've been under a psychological operation. And they've led you along. OK, and it's in their mind, it's worked, but everybody is pretty much calling them out because the scriptures talks about how their skirts would be lifted. But Revelation, the 13th chapter gives insight. All right. As you continue reading this. All right. He would he would do miracles. See, he would do miracles and it would bring about the ancient Roman Empire back into the earth. All right. As it says here. 
saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had a wound by a sword and did live all right and ultimately you're bowing to ancient rome all right you're living the the, the we're literally in rome all over again all right the the, the 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 structures of the building fast food okay the idols the holidays the days of the the names of the the week <laughs> all of those things are tied to different gods the the names of the months tied to different gods and different emperors who were worshipped as, as gods see Saturnalia is back in the form of Christmas Okay, which has its roots in uh, Babylonian garbage. <laughs> you see? So, we're, we're, we're uh, the, the, the Olympics. I mean, we can go the Senate. We can go on and on and on on how we're living in ancient Rome all over again. See? And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast that they should be killed and that's the philosophies of ancient rome but now they have this, this the, these miracles uh, 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 synonymous with bringing ancient rome back okay so uh, this devil is losing his goddamn mind okay this devil is boasting himself up against the most high in the earth like no other nation has ever done again they say the tyrants of old didn't have the power we have you see and now they're bringing about stuff like this okay lab grown chicken meat is closer to restaurant menus and store shelves they already have it the majority of the chicken that people are eating is is is, is lab grown it's fake this is what this devil is doing in the planet Earth. He's opposing himself against the Most High, against his son, against righteousness, against reality. This, this dude is crazy. See? And he wants to, 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 to reinvent the will. Okay? <laughs> Which I'm going to have to go into this another time, but shh, human augmentation. The final battle with technocrats. All right. And transhumans. All right. And this is where we are. <laughs> all right. And this is what I've, we've been telling you. Technocracy at its core is the um, the notion that political problems should have technological solutions. The original technocracy movement, as conceived by Howard Scott, did not regard itself as a political movement of any sort. And remember, Biden told you. It's going to be less politics and more science. All right. He said that he's bringing about the will of the elite. They want they wanted to abolish politicians and by extension politics. Now, as you see, the, the, the political spectrum has gotten significantly weak and demonic. All right. And, and crazy. It's become a shit show. It's become a game. And that's being done on purpose. Yeah. Joe Biden, he's, he's stupid. All right. He's, uh, you know, but but that's an act They're They're doing these things on purpose. OK, this is being done on purpose. All right. And then you have the thing with Trump. You have this divide because they're, they're using those two political systems to bring about. All right. The, the, the they, they use the two horns like a lamb. OK, to bring about. All right. Draconian measures and harsh methods of rule on the earth. And then. As things get significantly crazy, it can be some type of outbreak. It could be some type of grid attack. OK. Politicians will no longer be because people are going to be coming after the politicians anyway. So they're going to use their technocracy to say, well, these are the solutions. OK, so if you are a technocrat, if you're into technology. All right. And if you're into science, well, what are the scientists and tech, the people who are into technology, what are they What are they into in the planet Earth? <laughs> oh, man. See, and, and you'll, you'll be bound to that law. They will then be the law. You won't have uh, the political system will be no more. The, the, you know, the Constitution will be no more. See? And 
all of the legislation and propaganda that they've been putting into the earth leads towards them having this kind of power and taking away everyday rights. As a matter of fact, it says the technocratic perspective basically regards people and their societal relations as machines with discrete inputs and outputs. OK, you're going to be brought into a system to where you are a barcode. OK, you are a trackable, traceable all right, uh, uh, cattle. It disregards basic things like values, personal tastes, delights, uh, and disgust. All right, and nor no, normativity. From the viewpoint of a technocrat, what people want doesn't matter, because again, a catastrophic, a catastrophic event. Okay, you have a uh, infodemic, you can have a pandemic, you have it, you kind of have all kind of things happen. So the solutions will be brought about all right by technology, by science and 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 this is where this devil will again in Revelation the 13th chapter, he's going to have the power as he's made you to bow and worship um his image OK. He, he has all of these miracles. He, he, he's, he's got people drunk. OK. The next step is what? And he calls it all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a haragma in their right hand or in their foreheads that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So as we can see, everything is now going digital. All right. It makes sense that all of these things are happening synonymously. OK, the uh, the uh, talking point. All right. Of bringing about a new world of actually upgrading what it means to be human, you know, and bringing about. The highest boast against the most high the world has ever seen. OK, this is where we are in the earth. All right. And you can read this here. OK. Where they're, they're, this is what they're honing in on, giving full power, all right, to who that in, in case of uh, uh, an emergency in the earth. Senator Ron Johnson warns that, all right, who that Dimmick Treaty would undermine U.S. sovereignty. And you don't have sovereignty, all right? Seed intellectual property uh, rights to, to who that. And grant them more power to censor mis and disinformation. See, because they're losing control of the narrative. Okay, again, the wicked is being revealed. So it's becoming more and more clear what they're doing. Okay, they're being called out. So, you know, when they bring about that draconian measure and these harsh methods of rule and tell you, you this is what you have to do and you got to take this, you got to, this is your only way to be entered into the NWO. They, you won't have a voice. And if you do have a voice, you'll be subject to death or har harsh methods of, of persecution. It happened in Rome, right? Should it happen with the Greeks, the Hellenization? And that's what this is. This is a Hellenization. And if you go into the Greco-Roman uh, system, they tagged, they they uh, 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 branded their sub their their slaves. They branded. Okay, there was particular points where you would have to take a brand, all right, to this particular god Bacchus. Okay, and it was a leaf that you would have to get branded on your body, and you would be entered into a registry. See. That's what all of this technology is leading you towards. That that world, that new way. Mr. President. Senator from Wisconsin. Mr. President, last December, the World Health Assembly established an intergovernmental negotiating body to draft a new convention on pandemic prevention and preparedness. At its fourth meeting last month, the negotiating body accepted a draft of this new convention that would give the broad new powers in managing future pandemics. If accepted, it would cement the world at the center of a global system for managing future pandemics, and it would erode U.S. sovereignty. 
Uh, let me just uh, list a few of the examples of some of the provisions of this draft, uh, and I'll call it a treaty. Uh, currently, it would require a substantial new financial, U.S. financial commitment to an international body without proportional voting power. It would require the U.S. to give the World Health Organization 20% of vaccines and other pandemic-related products produced during future pandemics. It includes a heavy emphasis on the transfer of intellectual property rights to the world and a leading role in fighting misinformation and disinformation. And as the Twitter files reveal, uh, that leads to censorship and the suppression and abridging of freedom of speech. It also promotes a global One Health approach to healthcare, including harmonizing regulation this power. Far from it. At a critical moment in late 2019 and early 2020, we utterly failed to detect the emerging a pandemic and delayed informing its member states. Instead, it was kowtowing to Beijing. Now, unfortunately, there are indications that the Biden administration is considering joining this new convention by, by executive agreement and avoiding the Senate. We should not let this happen. An agreement of such magnitude needs to be submitted to the Senate for advice and consent. This is not a partisan issue. So this is what they can use, okay, in the future, all right, to say, all right, uh, 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 <laughs> this is what you're going to have to do if you can read between the lines, okay? Uh, uh, Revelation, the 13th chapter, man. So these devils are divided. And again, this is, he's trying to play the most high. Literally, lab-grown chicken meat is getting closer to restaurant menus and store shelves. Why? Why can't we just have, why can't there just be regular chicken? And see, everything is defiled. Okay? Because this man is boasting himself up against the most high. Okay? As if the way the Lord created these things and for the purpose he created these things wasn't good enough. The battle over bacon is headed to the U.S. Supreme Court. The nation's $20 billion pork industry is suing the state of California over a law that could dramatically change how farmers are allowed to treat pregnant pigs. It could have a major impact nationwide and also on the prices we pay for pork at the grocery store. What the hell is this talking about? It says that a scientific quest to feed the world, uh, protect animals, and simultaneously cut down on greenhouse gas emissions. All right is on the cusp of a major milestone in the U.S. advocates say. So this is going to be the next, all right, uh, Dimmick. It says, in the last five months, the U.S. FA, uh, U.S., the FDA has declared American producers of lab-grown meat to bring their products to market, finding no questions about the company's claims, all right, the protein is safe for human consumption, all right, though critics still have concerns about the industry financial viability relatively to long term output. So if you change the food, you change the people. See, and that's ultimately a big part of this plan as well. All right. To pretty much, you know, gain control of the inward part. OK, and uh, what they're doing to the food has a big part of it. OK, they're, 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 they're slowly but surely changing human beings. This is why the scriptures say if no uh, if the Lord didn't send his son, no flesh will be saved. OK, so the, the again, this agenda to do away with nature to bring about a safer form of chicken, cow, cattle, meat, this, that. Is at the forefront of these devil's plans. Okay. <laughs> it says that is a watershed moment because it's never happened before in the history of humanity, said Dr. Uma Valetti, founder uh, and CEO of Upside Foods, one of the approved producers. And it's like these th th these people just got to be stopped. Okay. Again, it talked about a mouth speaking great things. Lab grown meat. 
is a part of speaking great things. Okay, AI as a god, okay, is is speaking great things. Okay, it's getting creepy out here. Think people are getting significantly stupid, more and more stupid. But then you have all of this technology everywhere. Okay, <laughs> human beings need to repent. You Israelites, you need to repent. Technology and all of this crap this dude is talking about ain't gonna ain't the answer to the the world's problems. It's only going to make things worse and give them more power. Okay, so I just wanted to go into a few things. Uh, hopefully you all were edified. On to the next. Shalom.